Stem cells are a clinical reality. However, in order to increase the efficacy of stem cells as a therapeutic possibility, it is important to be able to understand what makes a stem cell a stem cell. What are the molecules that allow stem cells to make copies of themselves so that the stem cell population is maintained? And what is it that allows a stem cell to differentiate into specific tissues? So um, these issues are addressed in a publication which came out last year in the journal Stem Cells. Essentially the publication addresses the first issue, the issue of what is it that allows a stem cell to expand? Because if we understood this and if we could expand stem cells, then one can generate large populations of autologous stem cells outside of the body and keep them frozen for future use whenever they are needed. Now, one of the molecules known to be important for stem cells to f make copies of themselves is called HOXB4. It's a transcription factor whose expression is necessary for the hematopoietic stem cells, the stem cells that make blood, to be able to self-renew, to make copies of themselves. If you inhibit HOXB4, then the hematopoietic stem cells don't make copies of themselves. This is known and has been published. If you add exogenous HOXB4 to an existing stem cell that already has it, so if you overexpress it, you actually see increased self-renewal. Now, the question of the study is, what if you inhibit an inhibitor of stem cell self-renewal and then add HOXB4? So an inhibitor of stem cell self-renewal is P21 which is a cyclin-dependent kinase. So if you overexpress P21, then the stem cells don't multiply. And mice exist that are genetically knocked out for P21, and in these mice, the stem cells multiply faster. So basically, this paper was asking the question, if you use P21 knockout mice and transfect the stem cells, the hematopoietic stem cells, with HOXB4, can you see a synergistic increase in stem cell multiplication? How would one go about to answer this question. Well, what the authors did is they used bone marrow stem cells and they transfected them with a retrovirus which expressed, which induced expression of HOXB4. In order to track the cells which are transfected with HOXB4, the retrovirus also contained GFP. It's a, called green fluorescent protein. It makes the cells that are transfected glow green and has a control, some cells were transfected only with the GFP. Uh, this is called, uh, for the purpose of the publications, they refer to GFP transfected bone marrow cells as MIG, M-I-G, and uh, GFP plus Hox P4 has just uh, B4 transfected. And wild type bone marrow was used as a control, non-manipulated bone marrow, WT, and uh, bone marrow from P21 knockout mice uh, so bone marrow from mice which do not express the inhibitor, uh, these are referred to as P21. So when one looks at expansion of cells in culture, days in culture is on the x-axis, fold expansion in comparison to wild type bone marrow is on the y-axis, one can see no expansion in wild type bone marrow. If you look at P21 knockout bone marrow. So remember here, the mice do not express, the bone marrow does not express the inhibitor, which is P21. You see a slight increase in expansion. If you take wild type bone marrow and add exogenous HOXB4, you see an increase in proliferation. And if you add HOXB4 in the context of uh, P21 knockout, you see even more proliferation. So in conclusion, the HOXB4 transfection does increase expansion and transfection of HOXB4 in P21 knockout even further increases in vitro expansion. Now, that was expansion of cells just by looking at the stem cells. But can the stem cells actually uh, do they still have the potential of a stem cell, meaning can they actually go and make colonies? So in this experiment here, cells were taken at day zero of culture or at day 11 of culture. Day zero, top panel, day 11, bottom panel. At day zero, 
the cells didn't expand and then they were just plated in methyl cellulose and at day zero you don't see a difference between the treatment conditions however after 11 days of growing and then plating them to differentiate you can see much higher stem cell activity in the cells that are transfected with uh, HOXB4 and even higher stem cell activity in the cells transfected with HOXB4 that are knocked out for P21 confirming the previous results but at a functional level. Now what if you take the colonies and you plate them a second time? So um, the colonies um, from the original day zero plated one time and then plated a second time you see only only HOXB4 transfected and HOXB4 transfected in P21 knockouts only in those ones do you see an increase in um, a maintenance I should say of stem cell activity in terms of ability to make colonies in vitro colonies are fine but what about in vivo activity so in this experiment uh, cells were cultured in vitro at day 0, day 5, and day 10. Then they were taken from in the in vitro culture and injected into mice, into lethally irradiated mice. And the number of donor cells in peripheral blood were observed. And remember how we talked about before that stem cells, they don't like to proliferate outside of the body. So as you can see, the more you keep them outside of the body, the less ability they have to and graft in the mouse and to um, contribute to donor hematopoiesis. Well, as you can see in day 10, primarily the main engraftment, in vivo engrafting function, was from the P21 knockout bone marrow that was transfected with HOXB4. So, although we do not see an in vitro expansion, we do see an in vitro maintenance of hematopoietic stem cell activity. Now, what if you euthanize the mice? in which this was performed so that you can see um, and, and you transfer it into a second set of mice because remember the stem cell should be able to make copies of itself but also to reconstitute and differentiate well as you can see in the secondary set of mice both from 5 day original in vitro culture and from 10 day original in vitro culture the only group that maintained repopulating ability was the stem cells that were from a P21 knockout and transfected with HOXB4. So in conclusion, transfection with HOXB4 in the context of a P21 knockout, it increases the stem cells in vitro self renewal activity and in vivo reconstitution activity. However, keep in mind that this is still Transfection is a difficult procedure and knocking out is also difficult. So for clinical applications, there are still several hurdles that need to be addressed. Um, so this brings us also to some important questions. Is this applicable to non-hematopoietic stem cells? As the viewer knows, bone marrow cells have been used clinically for treatment of liver failure, heart failure, and different other conditions. So can we also manipulate these kind of bone marrow cells, bone marrow cells that give rise to different tissue? More importantly, what are chemical chemicals that can modulate these pathways? I mean, we should look at the study not just from potential of one day being able to knock out P21 and one day being able to effectively transfect HOXB4, but we should look at this as now we have some clues as to signals that are important. So it'll be very important to find molecules, even drugs that are used today that can upregulate HOXB4 or downregulate P21. Now we have some target molecules, um, molecular targets for drug screening. And the other whole, uh, point is, now that we know some switches involved in stem cell self-renewal or potentially involved, can we make diagnostic tests to see which patients bone marrow would engraft better? Thank you very much.